Hi, this is Jen Rubin, and this is Jen Rubin's Green Room. Beginning of another week, only about six weeks until the election. Wow, seems a lot closer than it used to be, doesn't it? Well, I think there's plenty to be optimistic about. Not only do the polls, if polls give you comfort, uh, show Kamala Harris on a national basis pulling away and doing awfully well in a lot of the swing states, but the other indications of success in a presidential campaign are more and more apparent. She's got more money. She's got more on the ground enthusiasm and volunteers and a turnout operation. And Donald Trump is running as fast as he can from an invitation to have a second debate, even with CNN. Those were the people who had the first presidential debate and asked, acted like timekeepers rather than moderators. Even those people, he won't have a debate in front of. And that's because, of course, Kamala Harris beat him badly. And ever since then, he has become more and more un emotionally, mentally unwound. He's ranting about women, telling them they won't be thinking of abortion. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Well, I think women will figure out what they want to think after all. It's remarkable how much of the conventional wisdom has proven to be wrong. Consider, remember, he was going to make inroads among Black voters. Is there any sign of that in the polls? No. Kamala Harris is doing about as well as Joe Biden did and other Democratic presidents with Black voters. Remember how young people were going to desert the Democrats because of the war in Gaza? Any evidence of that? No. Kamala Harris is winning overwhelmingly among young people. Many of these storylines are frankly manufactured, not because the press wants to intentionally mislead you, but because they're in the business of creating storylines and tension and drama. So Kamala Harris is doing well, but things could go wrong. That's the kind of coverage that you get. It's not only misleading, it cheapens our politics and it diverts from really the main issue facing us. And that is, do we really want to reelect someone as dangerous, as unfit, and as crackers as Donald Trump? Fortunately, I think the answer increasingly is no. Now, there's some interesting developments both at home and overseas. The first is, once again, we get a load of data, this time from the FBI, showing a substantial drop in violent crime. Yeah, it's real. No matter how many times that Donald Trump rants about this dystopia and crime is afoot and migrant crime is afoot, none of that is true. Crime is down. Violent crime is down. And some of it has to do with the improved economy, but a lot of it has to do with the actual policies that this administration has put in place. Remember, with the American Rescue Act, they gave billions to local government to keep police and first responders on the job rather than getting laid off. They have devoted an enormous amount of resources to crime fighting, and they haven't done it in a way that takes the position that, well, as Donald Trump, you just smack them around a little bit. Remember, he said, don't be too nice to them. Rough them up a little bit. No, they've invested in community policing. They've invested in salaries and in support for local police. And lo and behold, it seems to be working. Same thing at the border. Border crossings are way down now, in large part because the president enacted unilaterally because Congress wouldn't act its border uh, provisions. Um, and frankly, Kamala Harris has something to run on on both those counts, on both the border and on crime. And then there's the economy. Uh, a half point reduction in the interest rates from the Fed have uh, given the markets another boost. They're at an all-time high. We've also seen consumer sentiment pick up once again, and inflation is down. This is a remarkable economic record. And I have to say, once again, the press has done a horrible job of informing Americans as to what the real state of our country is. How many gloom and doom economic pieces are there? How badly have they misinformed America about the state of the border, about the state of crime? Uh, we really need something like a press, you know, that would accurately pick up on the news, report it, 
keep get people informed so they can make decisions about the issues. Yeah, that would be nice. Meanwhile, on the international front, something interesting has happened in the Middle East. The focus has shifted from Hamas in Gaza to the north. If you recall, Hezbollah has been launching rockets for months now. They have had to withdraw the civilian population, hundreds of thousands of people on both sides of the border. Well, the Israelis had enough, and they executed really some remarkable, um, very spy, James Bond-ish kind of maneuvers in blowing up the leadership of Hamas, both by targeting their walkie-talkies and their pagers, and by bombing a meeting in which a bunch of top Hezbollah officials were meeting. They've also been successfully degrading, and by some accounts, at least half of the rockets that Hezbollah has have been eliminated. Now, once again, you get some very peculiar coverage in the American press. Hundreds killed. Well, yeah, most of those people were the terrorists, and Israel ups the ante. Well, actually, Hezbollah up the ante, and Israel is finally responding. Wouldn't it be remarkable if Israel did what the United States and the international community could not, and that is essentially disable and remove as an impediment to peace and to stability in the region an entire branch of terrorist operatives who are heavily supplied by Iran? When you remember Iran, they were going to retaliate uh, against Israel for blowing up a terrorist staying at a guest house. They never did that, did they? Israel, for all of its faults, for all of the difficulties we have with its prime minister, is remarkably adept at defending itself and taking down terrorists. And it would be nice if they got some recognition of the benefit that is accruing, not only to themselves, but to other Sunni regimes and to the United States itself. Now, do we have an ongoing problem with the refusal of both sides to finally bring the Hamas fighting to an end? Yes. The Prime Minister of Israel shows no inclination to, frankly, put this behind them. As long as there is a war there, he remains in power. And Hamas has no interest, frankly, in bringing this to an end because with every civilian casualty, they get to point the finger at Israel and say, ah, Israel is killing innocents once again. So it is not that Hamas is no longer a problem. It's not that the tragedy of those hostages has gone away. But we have to remember this takes place in the broader Middle East. And to the degree to which Israel is taking out Hezbollah and doing real damage, humiliating even Iran, it serves a very, very useful purpose. Lastly, Ukraine. The administration, and here's one area in which I have been critical, they have been very slow in meeting the demands and allowing the Ukrainian military to make full use of all the equipment. The Ukrainians will ask for some kind of equipment and will say, no, 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 too inflammatory, no, 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 and then after a few months say, okay, fine, we'll give it to you. Likewise, we've put various restrictions on the military equipment that we give them. You can't use them to shoot into Russia. Okay, you can shoot into Russia, but you can't go very far. And eventually, eventually, we say, fine, go ahead. This has not been a smart policy. Uh We need to fully supply Ukraine. They have been effective in pushing into Russia and creating chaos there and embarrassment. And we have to actually allow them to fight. And here is where I think Kamala Harris may actually be a bit more aggressive than the current president. And I say that only because she has she comes to this um, with a very tough background in not only law enforcement, but in intelligence. She's been a very strong spokesman on the international stage for the NATO alliance. And she will bring in her own people. And frankly, I think there probably could be some personnel at the top of the Biden administration who's not going to be carried over, most of them actually. And I think this hesitancy, this one step forward, two steps back routine 
that the Biden administration has gotten into may become a thing of the past. So there you have it. The Democrats have a talented presidential contender whose popularity keeps going up every time she appears and Donald Trump's approval keeps going down. So I think we need to see both of them, more of them, uh, and the public will continue to make this distinction between someone who is incredibly talented and fit and someone who is not. And domestically, there's a lot to be positive about. On the foreign front, dangers lurk everywhere, which is why we need sober adults and not a lunatic. But the proof is still going to be in the pudding. At this point, six weeks out, this is now about turnout, about enthusiasm, about getting people to the polls, about making sure the door knockers are out there and that the public doesn't become, frankly, complacent, take it for granted. Democrats were down this road once before, if you remember, in 2016. It didn't end well. So running through the tape, turning out the vote, and who knows, six weeks from now, Donald Trump could just about be in our rear view mirror. Wouldn't that be something nice? If you like this program, you like our other programs, please tell your friends. You can click right there to subscribe. They can get the program wherever they get their podcasts. Bye-bye.